Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. In the last video we looked at how to carry out a titration to determine the water of crystallization of a compound. In this video we're going to look at how to analyse the results. Ok, as we said in the last video, we stop titrating when we achieve two concordant titers. And remember that concordant titers are within 0.1 cm cubed. The student achieved a rough titer of 11.20 cm cubed. In the student's first accurate titration, she achieved a titer of 10.20 cm cubed. In her second accurate titration, her titer was 10.40 cm cubed. And in her third accurate titration, her titer was 10.10 cm cubed. Titers 1 and 3 are concordant, so at this point the student stopped the titration. Now the student calculated the mean of the two concordant titers. Now, mean titers can be recorded to two or three decimal places depending on the mean. In this case, our mean titer is 10.15 cm cubed. Now we're ready to use this to work out the value for the water of crystallization. Here's the equation for the reaction between sodium carbonate and hydrochloric acid. We know that 10.15 cm cubed of hydrochloric acid reacted with our sodium carbonate. We're going to use this to calculate the number of moles of sodium carbonate in our reaction. First, we need to calculate the number of moles of hydrochloric acid that reacted. The amount of substance in moles equals the concentration in moles per decimeter cubed multiplied by the volume in decimeters cubed. The concentration of the hydrochloric acid was 0.1 moles per decimeter cubed, and the mean volume was 10.15 centimeters cubed. Converting the volume to decimeters cubed gives us a mean volume of 0.01015 decimeters cubed. Putting these numbers into the equation tells us that 0.001015 moles of hydrochloric acid reacted. The chemical equation tells us that one mole of sodium carbonate reacts with two moles of hydrochloric acid. So to calculate the number of moles of sodium carbonate, we need to divide the number of moles of hydrochloric acid by two. This gives us 0.0005 0.75 moles of sodium carbonate in our reaction. Now at this point, you need to remember a key fact. This represents only one tenth of the number of moles of sodium carbonate that we weighed out at the beginning of the experiment. Remember that we dissolved our sodium carbonate in water to a final volume of 250 centimeters cubed. However, we only used 25 centimeters cubed of this solution in our titration. So now we need to multiply our number of moles of sodium carbonate by 10. This tells us that we had 0.005075 moles of sodium carbonate dissolved in our 250 cm cubed of solution. OK, now we can calculate the value of the water of crystallization. Our mass of hydrated sodium carbonate was 1.452 grams, and the amount of substance was 0.005075 moles. We can now calculate the molar mass of the hydrated sodium carbonate by dividing the mass by the amount of substance. This gives us a value of 286.1 grams per mole. OK, we now need to work out the mass that's due to water. Using the relative atomic masses in the periodic table, we can calculate the molar mass of anhydrous sodium carbonate. This has a value of 106.0 grams per mole. This means that the water must have a mass of 180.1 grams per mole of hydrated sodium carbonate. Water has a molar mass of 18.0 grams per mole. Dividing 180.1 by 18 tells us that we have 10 moles of water. So this means that hydrated sodium carbonate has a value of water of crystallization of 10. Okay, so hopefully now you can calculate water of crystallization by titration. 